Hello, my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are watching live and those that are listening later on our podcast, thank you so much for joining us. In today's segment, we are going to talk about financial stress, everybody's favorite topic. With me today to actually talk, talk about it and address it is Carrie Farron. And let's go ahead and bring her to the studio. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing just marvelous. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, um, how's this? How's this start to? How's this year been so far for you, as far as business is concerned? What have you seen? Have you seen a lot of changes? Um, this year has really changed a lot from last year. I talked to a lot of people um, that seem really stressed about things. You know, we've talked about the average debt, mortgage, car payments, etc. But people right now are stressed. Things are going on about with this election month. Social Security, losing that, um, fighting with other countries, stressed about prices of goods going up. I mean, these are things right now that people are really talking about and stressed about. And I hear it all the time. Yes. Yes. That is uh, so key. And that's exactly where I want to start, because when we had talked uh, last month and we were talking about um, finances, we had talked about some of these these top these topics. But stress specifically, we're talking about the housing and we were talking about money, we we're talking about payments. And well, one thing that we looked at is the national, the national overall debt when it comes to folks, right? So on average, you know, the mortgage debt um, as, a, as a whole for society, we're talking about student loans, we're talking about all these things that people are, are committed to on top of their daily activity as far as living. So it, would, you, would you think the, with the, the combination of both of those causes the stress? Oh, it definitely causes the stress. People are seeing, you know, with all these prices going up and all these debts that people have, it's getting worse and worse with interest, all of this inflation. Um, and people are, they're just not making enough money right now to be able to catch up with it and pay for everything. And that's all I hear a lot. I talk to a lot of people every day and they are just all the same, um, especially here in Colorado. These prices are really going up. I don't know how other states are, but I'm sure they're very similar. But Colorado is just going crazy. And people are scared here. I hear yeah. a lot of it. Um, I do hear people that are that know about it and think about it, but they have things in their head that they're really trying to overcome it. And, you know, the kind of it is what it is thing. So I like hearing that from people. But most of them are just, I hear just a lot. They're just yeah. not happy and they're scared. That's it. You know, there is, and again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse when it comes to COVID. Everybody's trying to move past it, but there was a, there was a definitely an affordability that existed and there was a comfortability that existed where even then there was financial stress. And I think it happens year after year, no matter what age group you've run into financial stress, but this one's different because we're seeing incomes not going, going up and we're seeing um, rates that so we're seeing inflation and everything going up all in the same breath. So we're there's, there's definitely a, a conflict of interest right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and get into some of these topics here. And the first thing that you want us to look at is looking at your financial your financial situation. So assessing your current financial situation and identify areas of improvement. Why are those your two first suggestions that you you know would like us to look at? Because these are things that we just want to really look at and figure out. People don't really think about what's really stressing them out. They know it's financial, but they just don't understand it all. So what people need to do is really just sit down and like you said, assess your current financial situation. You need to know about your income, your expenses, assets, debts, investments, savings. I know that's a lot, but those are all things you need to look down to and create some comprehensive overview of your financial picture. Um, the other one is identify the areas for improvement. Those are just reviewing your situation where these um, problems are and how you can improve them. And a lot of this is just really sitting down and looking at what you have, where you want to go and where the problem is. And people need to be really patient with that with themselves. But I know that's really hard because it's stressful. But if you can just sit down, set some clear financial goals, work on you know, th those kind of things, they had that smart financial goal thing where you establish your specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and a time bound financial goals. And if you just yeah. sit down there with family, with the people that are important that you think can help you with this, this is something you really need to sit down and look into. 
Yeah, I would agree. And I think there's we need to go backwards real quick because the key word is looking at it. Because it is it all depends on how you look at your situation that causes the financial stress. Um, for example, if you're looking at your financial situation and you don't feel good about tomorrow, the first feeling and emotion is stress. It's because you don't feel like there's going to be a way out of this situation. You're not seeing the raise come in tomorrow. You're not seeing um, getting a new job soon. You know, you're not seeing these things. And so when you look at it, it, it just, I don't know, it, it takes you away from the opportunity that, that may be standing right in front of you. So I, I do agree with you um, as far as assessing your situation and trying to have a better outlook is, I guess, part of the cause and effect of financial stress, right? Yeah, it does. It puts this little box around your head and That's this is right. all you see is the negative and the stress. And it is hard. It's hard to get out of that box and sit down and just think about it. But that's something that you really need to start with. Yeah. And let's let's be fair to everybody. Um, when you have a family, you have kids and you have a husband or wife or whatever the case may be. Looking at your finances is part of it is you're just hoping nothing uh, hits the fan. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you look at your financial situation, you're like can't nothing happen tomorrow, because if something does, it's over just about. Yep. Know? Yeah. I was just talking to a lady the other day that has a, a job that it just goes round and round and round. She makes just enough for the day, but she wants to be doing other things, getting into other businesses, doing things like that. But it's she has to spend so much time making a little bit of money that she has that she can't go to the other side and do what she really wants to do. So this is, it's tearing her apart, you know, yes. lady that I work with and I just watch this and it's just running in a circle. Um, so right. it's just really hard. That's right. That's right. Well, let's get into this topic. Uh, this is another good one is how close are we to financial stress today? And a couple of examples that you want to discuss is home inequality and also unemployment. Uh, how is that? I, I, yeah, how is that seen? Because, again, you come from an 18-year historical, you know, uh, knowledge base. And so over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, how has you seen the income inequality and the unemployment increase? Yeah, so the income inequality is kind of the, it's a significant portion of the population is living paycheck to paycheck right now. Debt levels have become very high. They're struggling to meet their financial obligations. And that becomes, you know, really unexpected expenses of loss of income. It's just, it's hard to explain kind of what these people are going through. You know, um, the unemployment, they're leaving individuals and families struggling to make ends meet. Healthcare costs are growing up like crazy. Savings rate, they just can't do it. It's like the lady I just talked about. You just can't get your savings going. You know, I know some people that try to do $50 a month, but Three months later, all of a sudden a bill comes in that they need $100 for and they take it out. So it's just, it's somehow we've got to try to help these people, you know, learn, learn of some other options, different ways to go. But you really need to sit down and talk to them and help with this kind of stress. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel confident that people want that type of, uh, or a certain amount of freedom within their finances. And that's the stress. And once you see that freedom starts to dwindle down because you're paying more at the grocery store or uh, inflation yeah. increase randomly over here, that that really constricts you. And like you said, you don't get to save like you used to. You don't get to do things like you used to. You don't if emergencies come up, you don't feel confident if they do. So, yeah, I, I is that am I along the same lines as you? Yeah, definitely. You know, there are some people are more financially resilient than others. Yeah. Um. But just right. any unexpected incident from anything, no matter where you stand, anything can happen just like that. And and it's just change. It's gone. And that's where the stress comes in. That's right. That's right. And this topic here, as far as inflation, and help us explain what real income growth with inflation means. Yeah. So when we look at this, this is something that I am not an extreme expert about it. So I just wanted to do the basics of kind of what this is to help people maybe understand why things are happening like this. So if you look at the difference between your income and your inflation, it's different. So 
Inflation are changes like in the cost of a basket of goods. That's how inflation changed and the real income just changes on um, how your income comes and works. So I'm gonna give you an example. So wages are driven by changes of supply and demand. And this is caused by demographic changes like in labor participation, growth and productivity, things like that. So when you have something happen with inflation, when you have a change of cost, I'm trying to put this in simple words. Um, when it comes to this, companies are going to have a slow raise wages because if it happens in the long term that prices go up, they're not going to be able to afford to bring the interest or the income for the client to be able to bring that up. So giving raises can cause larger negative changes in downturns like COVID. When we had that downturn, a lot of things went, a lot of things dropped real quick, but you can't drop your income. So what happens is that's why the income doesn't raise as fast as inflation, because they really have to watch for the downturns in these businesses that are happening. Yeah. And this happened during COVID, you know, and it's like, I have some other examples. Like uh, I was looking at the elementary school food that's gone up 254%. Mm. Okay. Eggs, 49.1%. Right. Anything like butter, 32.2%. And these are just examples that I've seen. But when those go up, you're going to look for a big loss in the company. So you just can't do your income compared to that inflation. And that's how the difference was. And that's where a lot of businesses are struggling to have those pay increases based on where everybody, you know, everybody should be uh, financially. So that way they can afford you know, their home or whatnot. Right. So businesses still, they need that buffer as well. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. You know, businesses have to watch their income as soon as they go down, you know, it's market. They have to make up for that and pay it. But it's also on the other side with the employees, if they don't get the raise, then their costs keep going down, you know? So gotcha. it's just the way it works. It's totally opposite of the way inflation works with your income compared to your business. Yes. And so is it fair? Because this is where society comes uh, crashing with, you know, crashing with each other, where employers are thinking that employees are completely unreasonable about their requests as far as their income is concerned with the extra money that they're looking for. And the employees look at the business owners that they're totally unreasonable for not paying more. Is this the middle ground of each party has something to look out for? Meaning if I'm an employer, I need extra income. It's not just because I'm holding it. It's because I'm looking at next year, making sure, you know, money's available for marketing or uh, next year, next year's budget or what whatnot. Right. So mm -hmm. is that the, is that the collision course that we're seeing? Yeah, definitely. Um, you really have to look in the long term. You have to look at, you know, these have long-term implications on what you're looking for. So you can't just focus on what's today. Um, just knowing that something can happen in the future with the business. And it's just not the business. It's, um, you know, the kind of the customers that they have. These can change. The kind of customers, the kind of way the economy is going right now, then your business could change. I mean, it's just right. anything just by the snap of the finger can change the way you're looking at that. And that's why inflation, it's scary. Your income is scary. You just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And that is a key point. So if you're looking at the rise in costs in businesses, they may be um, increasing costs just because they have their own financial stress, mm -hmm. right? Just to operate their own, the business, like they, the operating the business wasn't as the same as it used to be. It costs mm -hmm. more to run business. So we're seeing their financial stress and the decisions that they have to make. Yeah. So nobody's exempt in this financial stress. Yeah, it's hard on both sides. Really hard. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's a very good point. And so what do you mean by comparing asset, uh, comparing assets? We have absolute spending levels, lifestyle factors, and socioeconomic factors. What does that mean to the viewers? So if we look at like the absolute spending levels, um, try to put this together an example. So if a person is earning a million dollars a year to a person earning a hundred thousand dollars a year, 
that looks like when you look at like the million dollars, you think that they wouldn't be stressing because they have the money. But what it does is money kind of runs in a percentage. If you look at it that way, the more you make, the more you're going to spend. You have more expensive lifestyles, larger mortgages, larger rent payments, luxury goods, things like that that you do. So the more you make, the more you spend. So it doesn't matter when you're comparing a person a million dollars income to a hundred thousand income. It still can be scary if anything happens in that situation. And everybody mm -hmm. that has the money, they always want to grow with their neighbors, you know, look better <laughs> with their yes. neighbors, do this kind of thing. And that puts people into a situation, no matter how much money you're making, because it's a comparison that we have in this world anymore, is to be better than somebody next door. And that just puts you into a real mess. It's a real mess. And one information, one uh, example that I kind of looked at is I know a couple that they're very wealthy. They have good income. However, the husband lost his job. He actually got fired, which is sad. Then all of a sudden, half of that money just dropped. They have three kids. And all of a sudden, they've been really stressed because there went 50% of their income. And so it doesn't matter, again, no matter how much you make, that information, anything can happen. So people have to look at that differently, too. Yeah, I completely agree. And I that's what's so funny about society and just people in general. And this is not a me bashing or anything of that nature. So I want everybody to really take this in. We operate on a daily basis like um, thinking things can never happen to us. And that is, it's almost, it, it, it makes us weird. It makes us really different. It makes us make bad decisions because we're, like you just said, they were living just a great lifestyle, but all you have to do is lose a job. All that business has to do is downsize or do have a mass layoff all of a sudden. The next thing you know, so nobody's exempt from a financial stress. And like you said, and that's the thing about money is that the pursuit of it, it's good because I think that's the solution. If I make more, if I make a million dollars, I make $2 million, well, then all this stuff will go away. But like you said, people fall into that trap of they start traveling more. They get bigger boats. They get, a more, you know, two or three cars. I mean, just the lifestyle starts to match the income. And all of a sudden, now your stressful situation and what you have to lose is a lot more than what you had to lose before, it seems like. Yeah, I think so. The more money, the more money you spend, the more you're going to lose, you know, and it's kind of <laughs> like the, the people that win the lottery. Yeah, they win millions of dollars, but it's in their head on not being know how to save and spend. And that money's gone like that. It doesn't matter. There were ones I think that one just went through with one billion dollars. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how far that goes, because people just they don't understand money. And so that money doesn't matter how much you have. It can disappear in three years. That's right. That's right. All right. Um, and speaking of that, we have talk on vacation, uh, immediate gratification and short term focus. Uh, how often does and what do you mean by because immediate gratification seems very, very direct. But I definitely want you to, to address it. But what is let's start with short term fo focus. How does that how does that play into yeah. everybody's day to day? Yeah. So the short term focus anymore, it seems like everybody wants everything now. <laughs> um, and it used to not be like that when I was growing up anyway, um, and they want it now and they're able to go get it now. So they want the gratification now so that they can feel good about having this new car, the new house or um, the new boat that's sitting on that slide. Um, but it's only short term. They have a good time with it. And then once that's done, they're ready for something else. And so this continues going on without looking at the long-term goal of what you really want. Yeah. Um, or, okay, so short-term focus. Here's a, here's a thought, Gary. We were talking about looking at your financial situation, and that's what stress does. It brings you back to the short-term. Yep. It doesn't allow you to look at the long-term implications of making changes or that here's the opportunity, here's a gray area, here's what I'm depleting or here's what I'm gaining. But short term focus has you looking at the situation and has you making the decision that everything is just absolutely bad. Mm -hmm. And it just causes a funk within you. Right. Because you're not we're not perceiving it correctly. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it's um, just in a situation like you talked about before, like the immediate gratification kind of goes with the short term. And it's yeah. just um, people can sit down and they can talk about this trip and all this money they're going to spend and how happy it is. Um, it's no problem to talk about it and get it. But then again, later, it's done. And no. um, <laughs> the positive, it's like they have positive emotions doing it. But then when they're done, all of a sudden it comes negative again. Then they're broke, kind of don't have the money. They're stressed out. What are they going to do next? And during this whole time, they're not even looking at the future of what it's going to be if they ever want to retire. You know, kind of the way I look at it is I would love that trip to do it many times after retirement. <laughs> I want to have mm -hmm. the experiences after retirement, not, you know, knowing that I'm going to be OK, not spending it all right now. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I remember you talking about in our last show is those typically we spend a lot more time planning on vacations than we planning our financial future. So we don't deal with that financial stress for what it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just fun planning for ways to spend money, but it's <laughs> not fun sitting down and wondering why you don't have any money. You don't have any <laughs> You're going to get it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> much more stressful people just don't want to do that oh my goodness all right well let's bring up a very fun topic that everybody loves to uh or wants to avoid but always potentially seem, seems to run into which is divorce meaning divorce from financial stress and communication breakdowns conflict over spending and lack of financial planning mm -hmm. uh within your years i'm sure you've seen multiple multiple conversations over and how how this plays out within the family household. Yeah, I have. Um, I've seen so many things happen and I, I really don't know how divorces really happen in the first place until I kind of thought about it and how this happens when it comes to money. They have, it's a communication breakdown. They don't really know what the, you know, they misunderstand people. They have conflicts and they're not trying, they're not really being able to figure them out. Um, they have different aspects on how to spend money. They always have a conflict over spending and then lack of financial planning, things like that. Um, but what I learned from all this is that divorces can come from this really easy with all this stress. And I, I hate kind of sometimes talking about examples, but it is what it is. I've had two clients in my past that were great couples at the time, and I helped them with all their stuff. Then all of a sudden there was a divorce and money. It was insane how much they fought. <laughs> it was just like, it was down to each penny on the other side, you know? And I was just like, wow, this is, um, it's crazy. So I've, I've seen it before. I understand where it's coming from. And it's a really big reason for divorce because it's just lack of communication. And um, I had a, a really good friend. He's kind of a mentor to me. And he always tells the story about what happened in his divorce like area. So he was already divorced and he also had a debt that was close to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So he also had stress because he had to pay child support. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, is he didn't have the money. So he had to ask his wife <laughs> to get money to pay his ex-wife. Yes. Okay. So yes. he tells me the story about that is when they were talking about that, he said there was a purse thrown across the kitchen <laughs> and <laughs> it was like almost done. So, yeah. you know, he had to really sit down and think about what was going on and, and had to fix that. And it's been an interesting story that some of it will come up here a little bit later about them on another topic, but money is, it's, it's, it's scary. It is. And Carrie, you got me really thinking deep here. Number one, what comes to mind as you talk about that is number one, you got to really think about your choices in life. Mm -hmm. One thing that's really different about society and people is we're, we can free ourselves into some weird situations financially that boomerang right into the meat of our meat and potatoes of the marriage. Yeah. You know, we get married off this concept of which is not even a concept. It is accurate of love. And our yeah. best thought process and our ability based off of love in, but we do not do the actual work that's involved in it. And part of that work is 
understanding you grew up a certain way and thought a certain way and you grew up a certain way and thought a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that's that's your first collision course within that marriage. And if you don't deal with how you grew up and understand around money and how are you going to make it and what's your journey towards it and you'll slow down and understand what that is. I, I feel like that's what the cause of divorce is because you think you outloved these situations. Yeah. And so what yes. happens? So let me let me throw this out here because I'm on the road, Carrie. I'm on the road, so I got to keep it going. All right. <laughs> so you don't have this conversation. You start getting stuff. You start getting a house. You start getting kid. You start having kids. You have a dog, and you have all. I mean, you're just in love. Love is just running its course, and it's the energy of its own. But then one person loses their job, then all of a sudden, the understanding that should have been talked about a long time ago pops up because now you're like, well, I thought you were going to handle this because this is how I married you in this in this capacity. Mm -hmm. And so the rubber hits the road because it, it is that perception on, as, as we have talked about before, how you look at money, your financial outlook um, shows up at some point. And so um, I don't know, ultimately, we're, we're Ultimately, I feel like the fear is that there, that communication piece is so tremendously huge within how this thing, if you want to stay away from that divorce on how money works and how it works for that other person. And that is almost seems like that is one of the major things that needs to constantly grow within the marriage yeah. and constantly have a conversation about to even make sure that doesn't come back and boomerang and hit you. So that's my brain dump as you talk about that. So. <laughs> but do you agree with that? Yeah, you're saying everything I was thinking of. Um, assumption is one thing. Mm. And I will even say for myself, assumptions are not clear. And you <laughs> yeah. can't assume that the other person's going to do this or that. You have to have that communication. And when you said boomerang, it made me think of, um, you know, I don't know how to say it, but you got a boomerang with bad stuff on it and you throw it it just comes back to you and it's like we're keeping it pg everybody we're keeping yeah, it PG. it's like it was just a story it's just what you throw out just comes right back to you and uh, yeah that doesn't go well in a relationship that's right that's right Ooh, that's always a deep topic we'll we'll talk further about that um so let's talk about the statement of i can't afford it and you talk about the emotional response to money, perception of opportunities, and also long-term financial habits. Um, can't afford it. it. Seems like it's a generational thought process, and it just you hear it, you hear it so flippantly nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I guess all, all my life, and I haven't been around a, a long period of time, but long enough to hear that's a, that's a constant statement within what we what we say. So talk to us about how how this shows up. So like you said, the emotional response to money, relationship with parents like that. A lot of children have, not children, a lot of adults have told me that while they were growing up as a child, it was always, they wanted something, the parents would always say, we don't have enough money. Can't have that. There was always a rejection of something being able to be bought for the kids. And so it kind of gets in the head that the situation is all a financial stress. Um, relationship with parents, then it comes to the strain that it has with the children. You feel sometimes it comes resentment, frustration, disappointment, things like that, because you don't really feel connected with your family. As a kid, you don't understand, but it's kind of, if you never get what you want as a kid, and they're all saying we don't have enough money, that what gets in the head of it. And then with the long-term financial habits, that grows with them. So when they have children, it kind of goes back to them. And um, they are mindful messages. And I just, another example just went through, I talked to a friend of mine that's really working on her own business, um, wanting to grow, wanting to do these things that cost money, but the parent didn't grow up like that. The parent was told, you have to save your money. Don't spend it on this, don't spend it on that. But when you look at the two, they're totally different because the parent has barely any income. That's what the parent was set on for the rest of her life. But the daughter wants to really grow and continue 
to do it, but the parents holding her back. She told me the story the other day about she just mm -hmm. kind of the daughter kind of just gave gave up talking to her mother because she was just holding her back. Like they don't have any money, things like that. So it's grown in the family and it's really hard to watch. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that because when you think about opportunities and when people deny themselves of opportunities, you know, making another a move, making a financial move. But if you if you said that over and over again, I can't afford that. Then part of it is uh, taking yourself away from even pursuing the risk, the opportunity that may, you know, change your whole financial future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with it, with within, I can't afford it. It also thinks that there's this part of you that's trying to say there's nothing wrong with saving, but it's almost like you're hoarding as much money because you don't want you want to make sure that you don't lose and you know nothing comes you know you don't lose your house or you don't lose which it's almost like a it's right but it's also sometimes it becomes very restricting mm -hmm. it becomes a pattern and so you know I, I don't know i don't know if there's a balance and i can't afford it or is that is, should that be kind of part of how you how you operate yeah um thinking about that it kind of comes down to your behavior and your mindset your relationship with money mm -hmm. things like that that just need to you just need to change what you're thinking about the money because if all you're thinking about is you don't have enough it's going to stay with you you yes. need to be able to open up and focus and get um, a better relationship with your money get more confidence and try to forget about what your parents had said while you're growing up <laughs> yeah because things are different now that's right that's right i like that and um and speaking of like i like how you wanted to bring up this for everybody which is change uh we do need to you know um look at our attitude and make some drastic changes so uh the panic that comes with it to assess the situation create a plan and also action um when it comes to change carry and you have financial stress is it an easy change in mindset to switch yes and no depends okay. on you know how you look at it um but of course again at the beginning there's going to be panic like you say on there people are going to go back to you know what we talked about a little bit earlier um unexpected financial challenges they become overwhelmed and unsure of how to proceed and they panic Again, like we talked about before, assess the situation. Let's not panic. Let's look at some other options, kind of calm down, which is hard, but to go to the next step, then you can create a plan and then take action. That's the one problem a lot of people don't have to is they have everything together, but they don't take action on it. And then mm -hmm. what happens? It turns around, something else happens and starts the panic again. So that's what you need to do, really sitting down with your family, the people that you take care of, wherever the finance is, and do a plan and take action on it. Yeah, I uh, I love that. When it comes to taking action and what, you know what happens and what I've seen in my time here, Carrie, when people start to change, it's almost like a working out, that New Year's resolution time frame. You start the change you're into it, you're there every day, but all of a sudden life hits you just to challenge you to see if you're committed to that change. It's not really a bad circumstance. You can make an adjustment, but all of a sudden that one circumstance hits and you fall off for the rest of the month and you never hop back on. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like when it comes to change in, in, in financial, changing your financial situation. This is seems like there's a dedication and a resolution, become, become resolution oriented in order to really ensure that you can really change this trajectory because staying in financial stress is the bat is the battle get out of it right yeah and it's really hard because like again we said earlier things continue to happen everybody can do really good and then all of a sudden it cracks again and so the change they keep having to try it and it keeps crashing um so it's really hard for people but there are different mindsets that people can start using to be able to look at this and these are hard for people and there's things that i'm still you know learning how to do is when it comes to being able to look at a different view change what you're looking at quit the stress is to start doing positive things like practicing gratitude mm. you know be grateful for what you have the things that are around you 
you need to shift your focus more on abundance. I know, again, that's really hard because you're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. You don't have it yet. But change your focus on that. You know, um, challenge your limiting beliefs. Visualize success. These are all things that are positive that you want to change your mind on. But it's very hard for some people. And like I said, yeah. I'm still learning how to do it. But it's just focusing, looking at more positive things, be around positive influencers. And hopefully that will help change the view. And I know that sometimes it's really hard, but I do think the first one to really start with is practicing that gratitude. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, Carrie, give us some final thoughts and let us know what we need to do. Yeah, so as we look back at again, with the stress that we have, I want people to understand that there are ways out of this. There are ways that people can help other people. Um, you know, you go back to the example that I talked about with the person that I work with, and he totally, you know, changed his mindset on how everything works for him now. So what I'm just trying to say is I know we have that situation, that problem, that fear, but there are ways to change this. And I would be more than grateful to sit down with people and kind of help with their move from stress to hopefully more happiness, abundance, and gratitude. I love it. I love it. And, and, um, and speaking of gratitude, I'm very grateful for you to have this conversation and talk about this financial stress. I know it's a hard topic to, to bring up because it's not the most alluring topic, but it is something that's real. It's happening in homes left and right. And we're seeing more distress and stress than we've ever seen, you know, before that I've ever seen and probably you've seen for years. And the, the the mission is let's let's tackle this and i feel like that's the that's the tone that you want for people to come to right yeah yeah it's great so yeah and so thank you again for taking your time next month we'll have uh, a different conversation and keep the keep these conversations going but in the meantime thank you so much for being here carrie thank you all right we'll see you next time all right and for all the viewers, I want to thank you again for taking your time out of your schedule to listen to Carrie and to stick it through to talk about financial stress. Again, it's not the most alluring, most gratitude, most, you know, just earth shaking conversation, but it is real. And that's what we need to come to. We need to come to that point of real. Carrie talked about change. The change is let's resolve this. Team up with somebody such as Carrie to actually help you navigate this and no longer is that okay being your story. And maybe that's the stance that we're looking for you to take. No longer allow this to be your story. We can do better. We are better than these circumstances. And we just need to team up with people like Carrie and make sure that you come up out of this and be successful. Let's make sure our time is used, used correctly and there is a way out. We just don't need to allow it to happen to us. Let's go ahead and happen to it. So again, thank you guys for joining us, but Carrie and I, we actually have to get back to work. So we'll see you next time.